I think both the old and new Pacifica looks pretty good. And except for maybe reliability, it's the best minivan out there. We've got your thoughts and much more on today's AutoLine Daily. When Geely bought Volvo, the idea was to leave it as a standalone Swedish car company. Not anymore. Geely is going to absorb Volvo into one global business unit. It will have listings in both Hong Kong and Stockholm, and each car brand will maintain their unique identity, meaning there won't be any rebadged versions of vehicles. The auto industry is going through a slowdown at the same time automakers must invest heavily in new technologies. So by combining their businesses, Volvo and Geely hope to create financial and technological synergies between the two car companies. In September last year, the Trump administration revoked California's rights to set its own emission standards. But several automakers, including BMW, Ford, Honda, and Volkswagen, said they would still comply with any requirements put in place by the state. That led the federal government to launch an investigation into those automakers to see if they broke any antitrust laws. The Associated Press reports that the Justice Department found no wrongdoing and has ended its investigation. But California's legal fight with the government is still ongoing. Tesla's stock soared to the stratosphere this year. It hit a high of $887 last week, then dropped to $748 as some investors decided to sell and make a profit. Many investors believe it will crack $1,000 a share, and an investment group called ARK predicts it will hit somewhere between $7,000 and $15,000 a share in the next five years. But we think investors should be wary of a short-term correction. And here's the warning signs to be on the lookout for. Sales of Tesla's cars plummeted in the U.S. market last year and again in January. Tesla was able to overcome that by shipping cars to China and Europe. But with its Gigafactory in China, Tesla won't be exporting many cars there from Fremont. That leaves Europe. But we don't know what's going on there yet. Europe seems to take forever to report sales. The only January sales numbers we have so far are from Norway, the Netherlands, and Spain. And Tesla's sales are down sharply there. But those are small markets, so we really need to see what happened in the rest of Europe. And those numbers are just coming in. If they show a drop in sales, it could trigger a stock correction. But keep this in mind, Tesla's car sales always start out low at the beginning of each quarter and build strongly at the end of each quarter. So even if sales look weak right now, they could look good at the end of March. And we offer this insight so that all of you AutoLine Daily viewers can have a leg up on what's going on in the market. And speaking of Tesla, it grabbed the attention of the automotive world when it unveiled the Cybertruck last year. It's hard to believe a traditional automaker would introduce a vehicle with such radical styling. So how are the designers that work at those car companies reacting to Cybertruck? On last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by John Manugian, a design veteran in the auto industry. And here's what he had to say. Are the designers today looking at that Tesla and saying, should we do something or should we just dismiss it? I'd like to think, I don't know this for a fact because I'm not in there, but I'd like to think that they're asking themselves some serious questions about what are we going to do next? Are we going to keep doing the same thing over and over until we're out of business? <laughs> or are we going to respond with our own cyber truck, whatever, whatever that is? I, I don't know. We're well, going you know, to find out. Sid Mead, before he passed away, was asked what he thought about the cyber truck. He said he found it visually breathtaking. <laughs> and he word. said, that the form language for pickup trucks has forever changed, or words to that effect. And I think his words will be closer than we might think. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in watching that show, you can just click right up here, or you can always watch it on our website, autoline.tv.
Daimler is ramping up its cost-cutting measures. In November, it said it would cut at least 10,000 jobs by 2022. But now German newspaper Handelsblatt says there will be up to 15,000 job cuts. The previous cuts would clear up $1.5 billion to fund future products and technologies. And the new report also says Daimler will reduce investments in loss-making projects that are not part of the core business. Ford came up with a new way for bicyclists to communicate with car drivers. It commissioned a prototype jacket that displays a number of icons, which can tell drivers what their intentions are or how they're feeling. The LED panel displays left and right arrows, a road hazard sign, or one of three emojis. And the cyclist activates each icon via a wireless remote that straps to the handlebars. You know, we really like the idea, but it's not available to buy yet. And we think there would be a lot of sad and angry faces out there. On Friday, we asked you all your thoughts on the Chrysler Pacifica's new styling. Some like the look. Lambo 2015 says the Pacifica is far better looking than the goofy looking Odyssey or Sienna. And Kit Gerhardt adds, I think both the old and new Pacifica looks pretty good. And except for maybe reliability, it's the best minivan out there. But most aren't too fond of the styling. Max agreed with someone else who said the new front end looks like the old Chrysler 200 and adds, boring. Bob DiCardinas says, we have a 2018 Pacifica Hybrid, which is what my wife drives. I fell in love with its design, especially the grill, but I think the new grill looks terrible on it. Clayton Root is right in line with Mr. DiCardinas. He says, front end is a no, rear end is a yes. Now they need to work on the rear three-quarter view as the C-pillar is fugly. And with the last thought, Roger T. wonders if the new rear lighting design is a sign of things to come. I wonder if the Pacifica tail lamp is a sign that SCA is trying to blend Chrysler and Dodge, baby step to merge the two. Now that is certainly an interesting thought. We'd like to thank everyone for their feedback. There was so much, we just couldn't get to it all. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. And by Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy efficient world. The coronavirus outbreak in China forced a number of automakers to suspend operations in the country, but some companies are getting back on their feet. Tesla has resumed production at its factory in Shanghai with assistance from government officials. Daimler and Ford are restarting production at certain facilities, and Volkswagen is opening a plant it operates with SAIC, and it's opening most of the factories it operates with FAW. And General Motors will resume production on February 15th. But not all automakers are getting back to normal. Toyota and Honda have extended production shutdowns in China, and SCA is experiencing parts shortages at its European factories, which is disrupting production. Speaking of China, car buyers there sure don't like three-cylinder engines. GM introduced three bangers in cars it sells under the Chevrolet, Buick, and Baozhen brands, and they proved to be practically salesproof. Chinese consumers believe that they vibrate more and are noisier and are not very interested in them. The head of GM China, Matt Tenzian, told analysts that GM's key new product launches in 2020 will all have four-cylinder engines and that it's racing to redesign cars that only offered three-cylinder engines so that they can accommodate a four. But with that, we wrap up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow.